Now, when we then come to this capitulary, it's not even certain, I'm afraid, that it's Charlemagne's. It may be later. Okay. It, it's um, certainly a very interesting text. It, it turns up, um, there are six clauses altogether, four of which are in one later manuscript, and two of them turn up in earlier manuscripts, the two which have this very strange oath that the, the Jews actually um, are supposed to swear. And at one level, it's basically saying that what we don't want the Jews doing is actually, it was something I mentioned before, we don't want them legally to take advantage of any Christian. What we do not want to happen is that no Jew should take a pledge or debt or goods to do with the church. So they're trying to, as it were, create a division between what the Jews do and what the Christians do, and they shouldn't actually overlap. Now, that is based, as far as we can tell, on Pippin and then Charlemagne confirming that particular provision that the Jews could live under their own law. And that was something that had been said already in the Roman world in the sixth century. It's very, very general when it's first enunciated. It simply says, Pippin, that the people in Aquitaine, whether they're Franks or Romans, can live under their own law. Now, the Jews, as far as we know, were under Roman law. So then later, Charlemagne respects what his father said, and the Jews are allowed basically to continue their own practices. So as long as they're not infringing on Christian things, then they can live in their own communities.